exactly. So the very first thing we're going to do is review this by determining if each pair of triangles is congruent by SAS, SSS, or they're just not congruent. Maybe we don't have enough information. So like I do, you know that I enjoy doing my annotation thing. I'm going to continue to do that here. So you know that we have one side. We have two sides with tick marks. So I have a side here, a side here. And I have two tick marks here. And I have tick marks here. Well, hang on. Well, let's, let's take our time with this and get there. So you're already saying that the first one, A, is congruent by SSS. What helps us see that? They both share a line. I call that a common side. So yeah, these ones are actually congruent by side, side, side. And then we can look at like letter C. Let's get my colors all set up. Looking at letter B, doing the same thing. I like doing the annotating. We have two sides that have two tick marks here. So these are congruent sides. I have another side with one tick mark. So we got those. And I do have angles. So chapter four. We do have side angle sign one of them, but as you've already probably noticed, the angle's a bit off in letter B. It's not in between the sides. So what's up with B? Are they congruent or not? No. So what do we f say formally? Not enough info. Not enough info. And letter C. Something I'm sure you'll get you. How many sides do we have in letter C? We have a couple. That's actually pretty right. Yeah. Well, we have two sides that have one tick mark. Those are congruent. We have two sides that have two tick marks. So those are congruent. What else do we have in this triangle? In these triangles? The vertical angles. Very good. Yep, just give me one second. And as we get all the writing down, you can tell that these triangles are congruent. Yeah. Congruent by what? It should be congruent by SAS. SAS. We can start on the side. Oh, it actually has an A. Yeah, yeah. The angle for the first one's kind of up here, but we do have a side, then an angle, then a side. And in both of these, it works. So we have A, B, and C, one congruent by SSS, one not enough info, and one by SAS. Well, today we're going to add to these because our list so far only includes one and two, side angle side and side side side. Well, today we're going to learn about HL. Am I good to move this up? No. I'm cool. So the key definition is to talk about. In a right triangle, the hypotenuse, hypotenuse, is the side that is opposite the right angle. We can use this kind of picture here, this diagram, if you will, to kind of help us in visualize. I should say visualize a right triangle. We have the hypotenuse, which is the side that's opposite the right angle. Uh, that also makes it what? The hypotenuse is also what? It's not just the side that's across from the right angle. It's also the what? It is the longest side as well. It is the longest side of a right triangle. And I'm going to make that note. Now, in a right triangle, we also have other sides. 
that we call what? What do you, what do you think? Legs. Given the diagram, I mean, we already know that we have a hypotenuse. The other two sides must be legs. And we're really going to work with this to get the vocab down. So this leads us to what we're talking about today. If I told you that we're talking about HL, what do you think HL stands for? Hypotenuse leg. leg. Hypotenuse leg. So it's even right here. The hypotenuse leg theorem. Yep. Hypotenuse leg theorem. There's three parts to the hypotenuse leg theorem. Conditions, if you will. The very first condition to the hypotenuse leg theorem is that there are two right triangles. Hypotenuse and leg go with right triangles, so we have to make sure that we have two right triangles. Actually, this whole box is so important, I think I'm going to circle it. I'm going to put a star next to it. Why? This is important. It's important to remember the conditions for hypotenuse leg. Are you short yes. So, first of all, our triangles have to be two right triangles, and we'll verify that as we get into today. We also have to have congruent hypotenuses and congruent legs. At the end of the day, basically, we need two angles that are congruent and right. We need two congruent long sides and just two more congruent sides. So if I move this up, oh, we need to go on to the next page. That's what it is. So the question here is for what values of x or x and y are the triangles congruent by hypotenuse leg? And I'm going to continue to ask you the same questions just so you get in the habit of asking them yourself. When I look at these two triangles, are they right triangles? Well, they are. Yeah. Why are they right triangles? Because they have the box, exactly. So we know that we've got right triangles, so this sets us up for HL already. We do have congruent legs and congruent hypotenuses. The question for you is this. If the hypotenuse is the longest side, or the side across from the right angle, what does that make 17 here? Is that the hypotenuse, or is that the leg? The it is indeed the hypotenuse, yeah. So what's x? Um, That's the hypotenuse of the second one. Not falling for it for a minute. So if these two triangles are going to be congruent, my hypotenuses need to be congruent. So x should equal what? Should equal yep, exactly. X should equal 17. As long as they are corresponding sides. What makes this happen, Jacob, what makes this work is the fact that 17 is on the side with three tick marks and X is on the side with three tick marks. They're corresponding sides. That's why that works. Yes? So that 3 would be what? So that X would be 3? Exactly. Now, how do you know that? I mean, yeah. Let's take a look at this. Help me out with this. Because you know that the 4.5s are in the same place. Let me ask you this vocab word. X and 3. Are these hypotenuses or are they legs? Oh, they're legs. They are legs. Honestly, I kind of wish it was like. You know, if I keep on saying, I might get canceled. You can't get canceled. I should, I should leave this going. This is going to be entertainment value for the people who watch this video later on. Did I tell you I was recording this? I don't care. <laughs> Please don't. They're yeah. going to they're gonna question you why you're seven years so, old. So both of these are legs, which means they are going to congruent. That's why x does actually equal 3. And that's why I continue to note that, like, hey, these are legs. Now let's apply the same thing to letter C. I'm going to go ahead and move this up. If you are good and ready. Say what? Yeah. 
I, I pretty much I record uh, the videos using this app, and I've just decided to record the videos as we do class. Why don't you just screen record oh. the video? That's what I'm doing right now. Well, yeah, like you said, you use it with an app. Why don't you just screen record it? No, like swipe down from the top. And I mean, I could, but this records it for me. They both record it for you. I'm not getting into this. Come on. For you may not. Looking at letter C, we're still trying to solve for X and for Y. Now, this isn't too hard of a setup. Suppose I start with the 20 on top. Is this a leg or is that a hypotenuse? That's a leg. That's a leg. This is a leg. So this is going to be congruent to the other leg. What is the leg in the other triangle? Four. Four Y. Nine. No, no, you had it right the first time. It's four Y. So this one's pretty easy to solve. What do I do? Divide by 4. Divide by 4. Uh, yeah, definitely. 5. 5 equals y. Done. So all we need to do for these problems is line up the parts that are congruent. And the 2x minus 1, what is that? Hypotenuse or leg? Hypotenuse. That one is hypotenuse, yes. And that's equal to what? 2x9 equals 9. Very good. The 9 is the other hypotenuse. Add the 1. Wait. Oh, so it's 5x and 5y. Well, kind of, sort of. When you add the 1, you do get 2x equals 10. Divide by 2, it's x equals 10. It's not 5x, it's just x equals. Yeah, so 5 is equal to y, and x is equal to 5. I like doing that too. <laughs> Looking at letter D, this one will be even easier because the triangles are straight up aligned, which is really nice for us. That 2y minus 10, what's that equal to? The 8. <laughs> right? So you add 10 to both sides. 2y is equal to 18. Divide by 2, like he said. Now the x plus 18, what is that equal to? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Subtract the 18. Yep, we'll go ahead and subtract the 18. 11. X equals 11. Now. So the key to those problems are just lining up the parts that are congruent. That's fairly straightforward. So we can go ahead and look at example 3, which is our last example for today. And the directions here say, what additional information would prove that each pair of triangles is congruent by the HL theorem? Now this is where we run through the checklist again. The checklist has three parts. First of all, what kind of triangles do I have to be working with? I mentioned it earlier. 90 degree triangles, right triangles. So yeah, the first thing is to make sure that we have right angles. The second thing is we need congruent hypotenuses and we need congruent legs. Well, let's, let's go ahead and let's try to knock off that checklist. Remember, we need three things. The first thing we need is a... Okay, but let's go through the checklist, man. I know. We need to have a right angle. We need to have congruent hypotenuses. And three, we need to have congruent legs. Okay? So, do we have right angles? We actually do. B is a right angle, and E is a right angle. So we have our right angles. Check that off the list. Do we have congruent hypotenuses? Yes. No, we don't, actually. Because BC here is a leg. Remember, the hypotenuse is across from the right angle, right? 
So across from the right angle would be this here. We have congruent legs. What we need are congruent hypotenuses. Cool. Yeah, basically. So what's the name of the top hypotenuse there, the, the longest side? What is the name? Yep. So AC, and what's the other one? So the le second leg, is, second hypotenuse is DF. Cool. So AC should be congruent to DF. That's what we need in this problem. If we look at letter B, if we go through the checklist again for this, we should start off by having right triangles. Yeah. Do we know that these are right triangles? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not in these ones. Oh, no. Those ones. They don't got the square. Well, we don't know it yet, but we can make a pretty good assumption that it looks perfect. I mean, it does, but what we're trying to say is we want them to be. So we're going to make them. That's the whole point of this. We're going to make these congruent. So we're just going to add the square. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So what do we need? We need right angles. We have congruent hypotenuses. We have congruent legs. We need congruent right angles. What are those two angles there? Well, you could say NML, but since they're, yeah, since they're separate triangles, we can just say angle M. And what's the other angle in the second triangle? Angle S. We need angle N, M, sorry, angle M and angle S because they're the two separate angles and the two separate triangles. We need those to be right angles. So what I'm going to put is need angle M and angle S to be right. We need these to be right angles, so that's what we're going to put. We need those two angles to be right angles so that we actually have right triangles. We already know that NL and TR are congruent because they have the tick marks, right? Yep, because they already have tick marks as well. Make sense? 